Thanks for joining in for today's webinar. My name is Vivek. I'm the VP of Product at Interspace, and we are going to talk about AppSec Playbook for 2023. I'll be discussing about the trends on the application security that we saw in 2022. What does that mean and how, as a security practitioner, you should make yourself ready to face 2023. With that, let's get started. This is going to be the structure of today's uh, presentation. I'm going to talk about the current state of application security, what does the future look like, and how you should be mitigating, uh, how you should be thinking against about this and uh, uh, thinking about the various mitigation uh, techniques. Right. With that, let's get started. So current state, how did 2022 look like? 2022 was a seriously bad year for cybersecurity, right? There were a lot of attacks that you would have read in the papers or in the news. Uh, some of the recent memories that uh, that comes to my mind is the Ames attack that happened, which kind of was an attack, ransomware attack on, a, on about five servers, uh, encrypting about terabytes of data, bringing the entire hospital to a standstill. And it took, took about more than two weeks for the uh, hospital to come back to normal, right? Uh, Rackspace has uh, reported um, customer data leakage, again, due to uh, attack, probably exploiting a vulnerability that was there in their servers. Uh, that's that's just some of these that I remember, even as I was preparing for a webinar, I was uh, reading a news how Costa Rica was brought to a standstill because of uh, an attack by Conti uh, hackers, right? And uh, um, they had escalated attack to a, such a large extent where the country had to kind of seek help from US and organizations like Microsoft to thwart those attacks. So these attacks are increasing. It is no more just a concern at an organization level or at an um, individual level, but it's kind of escalating to an uh, national level, right, where uh, these attacks are bringing uh, countries to standstill and attacks are happening on countries' key infrastructure. But unfortunately, the reality is this is just a tip of the iceberg. For all the attacks that you see, there are thousands or even millions of more attacks that is happening, which you are never aware of. Uh, if you just launch a, launch an public facing application on the internet just do a do a uh, experiment you just set up an uh, dummy site and see how many requests you would get you will immediately start getting requests from some random bots and everything that's because uh, all the time there is probes that is happening trying to figure out what are the nuances in the internet and how do you how to exploit those and looking for vulnerabilities. So these attacks are wide prevalent and it is continuously happening. And the various kind of attacks that is generally uh, generally in the in the uh, fashion nowadays is the DDoS attacks, bot attacks, ransomware, and the likes. Uh, and this is something that we also see in our uh, product, uh, just for a sample site of about 1,400 applications in the last two months, we saw about 829 million attacks, right? And these this means that so many requests, which we deem it as malicious, were trying to probe or attack the applications that were behind Aptrana. And if Aptrana was not in picture, then some of these would have uh exploited the applications um leading to data leakage or or security risks or bringing down the sites right so that's how prevalent things are so okay so what does that mean in the future the other thing that we see as we go into 2023 is that because of the economic climate that is in with the recessions being imminent and uh all the countries uh, uh, cutting down their expenditure and uh, even all the organizations are in a, uh, wait and watch mode. So what we anticipate is this is going to affect the budgets for the security 
teams and there is going to be a lot of crunch and uh, uh, demand on justification on where you are spending your budgets and uh, is it needed or not needed. So that's something that we anticipate to happen in 2023. Uh, again, as a relation to budgets, it is going to reduce the workforce that is available. Either you will be asked to uh, maintain the current workforce without expanding, even though you need it, or there might be um, there might be layoffs happening, right? So these are this is this is something that is anticipated across the industry. We are already seeing the trends in the U.S. markets, and uh, something which we anticipate to have to spread globally. Uh, in relation to it, there is going to be a serious uh, shortage of skills. This is a double whammy in that sense. Uh, there is lesser budget, so uh, lesser budget to train, lesser budget to get new resources with better skill sets. And uh, the other problem is uh, technology is fast evolving and uh, the hackers have new and new technologies to exploit, right? So there is going to be a expansion of gap between what is required from the security expertise versus what is available and where the hackers are. So that's that's going to be a key problem as we go into 2023. And finally, because of all these things and because of what I explained in the last uh, slide, attacks are not going to go away anytime soon. And uh, constantly there is going to be probes, exploits, using new ways of attacking applications. So the attacks are bound to increase. So this is a trend uh, that we anticipate as we go into 2023. And what, as a security practitioners, you should be looking for is trying to do more with less, trying to do more with lesser budgets, look for consolidation of, uh, um, of your tools, uh, understand uh, which tools are more important, uh, uh, look at the ROI of these tools, uh, see how you could do more with a uh, lesser budget, right? So that's, I mean, look at uh, so look at product vendors who provide managed service solutions, uh, look, look for uh, experts who could guide you instead of trying to build uh, in-house workforces, right? So that's something that we anticipate, we we uh, we recommend for the security practitioners to uh, be thinking about as you move into 2023. Now let's look at certain trends that we observed in um, 2022 and what does that mean as we go into 2023. Um, across the uh, sample set of applications we looked, we saw more than 60,000 vulnerabilities that were open, right? So these are vulnerabilities which are a weakest link in the application, which could be exploited. And, the, and out of these uh, 60,000 vulnerabilities, about um, 1,700 vulnerabilities and so were critical and high, which means which, these are serious vulnerabilities, which when exploited would lead to serious consequences uh, in the application could be uh, remote code ex execution and, and the likes, right? So, uh, something which is serious, and these were the kind of vulnerabilities that were found. And the worst part was many of these vulnerabilities were open for more than 180 days, which means that though the vulnerabilities were detected and reported, those vulnerabilities were not fixed, right, in the code, so it was open for exploit. Luckily, with Aptrana being in picture, Many of these uh, vulnerabilities, which were tried to be exploited, were blocked, and we blocked about 80, 800 million attacks, right, uh, across all these sites. But not everyone has applications that is behind a WAV or even with, behind a WAV, which is in block mode, right? So that's that's the area of concern. And what we recommend is to look for WAV solutions, which is um, which is which goes beyond compliance, right? Instead of putting WAF in log mode and uh, using it just for uh, just for informations and then 
uh, for uh, post facto analysis and remediation. Try to put WAF in block mode, look for solutions uh, that help you uh, put WAF in block mode and uh, protect it from day zero, right? So um, for in our case, 95% of the applications start in block mode from day zero and 99% of application goes into block mode within 14 days of onboarding and they remain in block mode, right? So that's that's something that is um, very powerful and we recommend you to look at solutions uh, that provides you these opportunities. Uh, so in our case, this is a portal, you kind of look at, uh, you could look at what are the attacks happening, which are the vulnerabilities that are there, how are these vulnerabilities getting proper protected and you get a lot of trends around that. So not saying that this is the only, well, only solution to be looked at, but look at solutions that provide you these capabilities. Uh, the best part what we do is uh, we don't expect customers to have the security expertise. So we fine tune the rules for the customer's need, ensuring there are no false positives, which allows, um, allows us to put all these applications in block mode, right? And uh, that's something very critical. And that's, that's again, goes back to your team, right? You have a tool, make the best use of it instead of um, uh, just using it for compliance perspective, try to make best use of those uh, money that you are spending. Uh, the other trend that we saw was um, more and more, we saw the attacks that were blocked were blocked through custom patches, right? So what this means is um, every WAF comes with a default set of rule sets and the default set of rule sets would be fine-tuned for OS, top 10 vulnerabilities and the lights. But many of the attacks that we saw was very sophisticated and it was sophisticated, uh, which could be blocked only through the custom rules. Now, uh, so we saw an increased, uh, increased need for custom rules virtual patching requirements. Uh, and we saw a lot of our customers uh, taking advantage of these facilities. Again, in these cases, what we do is we write the custom rules for uh, for the customer's case and, uh, uh, and we ensure that the rules are uh, accurate enough. This might, I mean, you might automatically start thinking that, okay, these rules if a lot of the rules are block, block, blocked by custom rules, then probably the efficacy of the core rules or the default rules are not that great. That's not actually the case. I mean, just by um, the analysis of all these zero-day vulnerabilities that we saw, we saw that 97 or more than 97% of those vulnerabilities that was of, that was of value were protected by our core rules, core rules by default. So it was it it is doing its job, right? And it is doing a very good a very good uh, job job from the efficacy perspective. But unfortunately, the thing that needs to be understood is that no application is same, right? Every application is unique. It comes with its own challenges and the virtual patching needs to be fine-tuned according to the application's need. And that's what we do. Uh, for example, um, uh, there could be vulnerabilities like an HTML injection vulnerability, Generally, HTML injection vulnerabilities will look at a URI and other things, but say the HTML injection is part of a uh, uh, post body, right? The vulnerability is part of the post body. Now, in many cases, many applications use HTML syntaxes in their post body. So just looking for HTML uh, syntaxes and trying to block them will cause a lot of FPs. And these are the reasons why many of the applications remain in log mode, right? So you can't put these rules by default in block mode. But when these vulnerabilities are found, which is a unique part uh, about Aptranor, is that we look at the weakest link, we try to find out what, is the, what are the vulnerabilities that are there in your application using our inbuilt scanner. And then we say, hey, how are these vulnerabilities protected? Whether they are protected by core rule cells or custom rules and wherever custom rules are required, customers could request for custom rules from a single click. Uh, so I can just giving you a quick demo of that. Uh, so this is our portal. Uh, if you can look at this, uh, look at this. Uh, uh, we have about 10 vulnerabilities found, about two of them are critical and high. Um, 
many of those are protected by the default rules at some requires custom rules and where custom rules are required customers can just come into the portal uh, look at the protection status and then um, and request for custom rules through a single click right so it gives you whether it is protected or not protected and customers can just ask for customer by just clicking on this so it's as simple as that and then the request goes to our team we look at those vulnerabilities and then we create an uh, accurate accurate uh, patch for those vulnerabilities providing uh, protection which uh, a granular protection to your applications right so that's that's the power of uh, virtual patching and that's the power of custom your customization but for that you need uh, WAF to be able to support these uh, functionalities. So you would have vulnerabilities, but it, it cannot be fixed immediately because of the changing priorities of business and security is not always on the top of the priorities. So, and that is one of the reasons why, as I said in the last slide, vulnerabilities are found, but never fixed, right? But what you could do is leverage your WAF to get these virtually patched at the WAF level so that there is more time for you to go and fix it in the code and uh, provide other protection that your applications need, right? So that's that's something which is powerful. And again, we recommend you to use your WAF solutions accordingly. Uh, the other trends that we are seeing is on the DDoS side of things, uh, we have seen about 336 million DDoS attacks across 32% 32, 32 of the sites that we are uh, protecting. Uh, that's about a 10% decrease uh, uh, quarter on quarter. And the major attacks that we saw was from countries like uh, United States, Japan, Germany. Obviously, India uh, is on the is higher on the list because many of our uh, customers are from India. So it's natural for the uh, attacks to be originating from India too. Uh, again, around the DDoS, what we found was, apart from the basic rate limits, right? What actually worked were the sophisticated behavioral based DDoS policies that we have and uh, and also the uh, URA specific rate limits, the more granular controls uh, that we provide that help to protect uh, against major of these DDoS attacks. So if you look at our uh, portal, I mean, the one thing about how we provide the DDoS protection is that uh, we go well beyond simple uh, we go well beyond uh, simple rate limits. Uh, we believe that rate rate limits are not something that is uh, which is very powerful and and asking customers to say hey how many requests should I allow from a user for your application doesn't make much of a sense because no application owner has these details, so they either end up putting a lower value, which will cause FPs or a very higher value, which means attacks can still succeed. So in order to work against that, uh, we have provided a behavioral-based policies where we give customers the behavioral uh, behavior of the last seven days, what is the maximum number of requests that we are seeing, and then customers can uh, provide a policy which is around the behavior. So if the max is about, in this case, I mean, it's a sample size, so not much of a request, but generally if say you are getting about 1000 requests or 10,000 requests from a user in a minute, now you could say at 150% alert me, at 200% show a captcha, at 250% start blocking, right? So that's kind of the behavioral based policies that we have, which is very powerful and which is uh, very useful for the customers. and also the URI based policy, right? Uh, so customers could give a URI level, so essentially granular level, right? Uh, look at the critical parts or critical assets in your application, say your login page, your checkout pages and the like, and have a more granular control. Instead of having, um, uh, you could have an application level settings, which could be at uh, user accessing the entire application, but at a granular level, in the login page, not more than a few requests um, would come in a minute. Now you can put a granular control on that, similarly on the checkout page. Again, all these things, you can configure it based on the behavior of the applications, uh, behavior of your users instead of randomly guessing it, making it very powerful. And this is what we have seen as something that has worked very well for our customers. 
The other trend that we are seeing is around the bot attacks. Uh, bot is a tricky space as I see it uh, because generally any application would also want bots to uh, crawl their application, right? The SEO rankings for your websites is because of bots. So uh, bots are sometimes good, and uh, but at the same time, there are bots which are malicious in nature, which would be used for, uh, say, scrubbing your applications uh, for DDoS attacks and various other malicious activities. So uh, the tricky part about bot is we need to first identify whether it's a human or a bot traffic and then differentiate whether the bot is a good bot or bad bot based on the behaviors. Um, in our product, we saw about, about 3.7 million uh, bot attacks in the space of about two months across 743 sites. Um, and the major bot attacks originated from Russia. Again, like DDoS, the behavioral-based bot policies is what um, worked for us. So this is how a bot protection uh, module looks like. Uh, you get to uh, provide the risk tolerance so customers could say what is their risk tolerance for their bots, uh, whether they are uh, where, whether they are paranoid about it or they are not too concerned about bots. Based on that, we will decide how the um, protection should vary for the applications. And for every request that comes, it goes through various bot modules that we have and we first classify it whether it's a bot or a bar or a not and then we classify it whether it's a good bot or bad bot and we say how we are protecting against those so customers also can go and analyze uh, the various trends that is happening and why we have classified certain bots as a uh, uh, bot right so uh, a bad bot so that's that's something which is very powerful and which has been um, very, very useful for our customers. So in conclusion, in conclusion, what I suggest to you guys as an application security practitioners is that uh, try to use the tools that you have more effectively, choose a WAF, product which is uh, going beyond just providing your black box solutions, which treat us, treats your application to be unique, provides you controls to customize, uh, helps you customize, um, provide, does not expect you to have the security expertise to essentially fine tune it for the application's need. Again, as I say, as I said, the 2023 is going to be tight on the budget, right? So trying to build in the expertise in-house, trying, asking them to be on top of the changing security space and being on top of hackers is not is not a um, battle that you can win. So instead of that, uh, look for uh, products that provide you. Um, of more comprehensive solution where you could put WAF in block mode with confidence. Uh, finally, one thing please do keep in mind is that hackers are going to get more and more sophisticated. They are leveraging all the technology advancements that is happening around the AI, ML worlds and all the likes, and the attacks are going to increase and it's going to get more and more sophisticated. So with that in mind, please prepare yourself for the year ahead. Uh, I'll leave you with my final thoughts. Um, when you are looking for a security solutions, look for a, a security product, which goes beyond just giving you a product, but gives you a solution that uh, that is able to serve your need, right? So look for a so solution instead of a product and look for products in which you could do more. One of the themes of 2023 is going to be consolidations. How could you consolidate the various tools that you're using and uh, be able to do more with less? And Aptana is one such solution. We have... Uh, we have the most comprehensive AppSec uh, platform in, uh, in the industry. 
we provide a fully managed uh, SaaS based web application and API prediction solution, which is integrated with an scanner, which helps you identify the vulnerabilities in your uh, in your application, find the weakest link, and then provide a comprehensive protection around that. Uh, we also uh, integrate this with CDN so that you don't have to compromise speed for security. And this is uh, comes with a more sophisticated DDoS and bot protection. And finally, last but not least, it also has an API security module which provides um, uh, help, which helps you in API discovery as well as um, you know, positive security models for your APIs. So if, if this is a kind of solution that you are looking for, please do reach out to us. We'll be happy to provide you a demo, guide you, and uh, help you out in this. With that, I come to the end of my presentation. This is my uh, customer portfolio. We have more than 4,000 plus customers uh, with a healthy logo um, with any, any major brands in India being our being a customer, uh, including banks, FMCG, and the likes. With that, we come to the end of this presentation. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, feel, free, feel free to ask. Uh, I think we'll have one more survey now, so I will start the survey shortly. Thank you.